Okay, so what um, what part of Acts are we in? Acts 23. Acts, Acts 20. Verses. Eleven to thirty-five. So we're going to cover. See if you guys can see this up here. Just a little bit of extra information. We're going to cover a, a big chunk of text. We may not get through it all tonight. We may do, we'll, but we'll see. Uh, we can basically split it up into, into lots of different units. But as we we keep discovering, as we go through the Book of Acts, when Luke writes, sometimes he writes about met something that happens over a long period of time and he writes it in a few verses then he writes about something that happens in a short period of time and he uses a couple of chapters so that and uh, in this case this is sort of an average uh, between the two yeah. where where did we see paul last time march no, no. <coughs> where was he he was in the court that's right he was. He was with Claudius Le, uh, Le, Lysias, the, the tribune. He was uh, tied to the post. He was left there overnight. They were going to whip him. Then they discovered he was a Roman citizen, so they couldn't do that. Uh, now uh, he he was before the Sanhedrin, uh, and they that didn't go down very well. So now he's going to send him to somebody else to be. To, to be spe to be seen to, but we'll start at chapter twenty three, um, verse eleven, because that we finished on verse eleven last time. But that's really the uh, the, the 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 key passage in this whole uh, chapter. He says there the following night the Lord stood by him and said to so Paul still there in prison, the Lord stood by him and said, take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem. So you must also testify in Rome, Marge. In Rome, that's where he's going, okay? <laughs> you'll get there, you'll get the answer right. You know that clock that's going to be right twice a, twice a day. Yeah, he's going, to be, he's going to be in Rome. Now, the interesting thing there, a lot of people say, uh, think that's uh, uh, what we called last time a theophany, but the actual word there for the Lord, for Lord take uh, the following night, the Lord stood by him. The Greek word is, is kyrios which means Lord, and it's talking about Jesus Christ. It's one of the yeah. two instances that that word is used referring to Jesus Christ. So we actually have a Christophany, mm. where Christ appeared to reassure Paul that as you have testified the facts about me here in Jerusalem, and we saw how he went full circle leaving Jerusalem and coming back, he says, now you must, you must testify of me uh, also in Rome. So Paul's pretty sure now, if Jesus has told him he's got to go to Rome, where's he going to end up? In Rome, that's right, despite what people want to, what, want to do to him. So we, ca we carry on reading that, it says in verse 12, When it was day, the Jews made a plot and bound themselves by an oath, neither to eat nor drink, till they had killed Paul. That's, that's quite shocking, we'll carry on reading. Mm -hmm. There were more than 40 who made this conspiracy, 40. And they went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food till we have killed Paul. Now notice they went to the council. Mm. Okay, that's a key point there. Mm. Now therefore you, along with the council, give notice to the tribune to bring him down to you as though you were going to determine this case more exactly. And we are ready to kill him before he comes near. Now that's at one, one section, okay? Mm. Now the son of Paul's sister, his nephew, heard of their ambush. So he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. And Paul called, to the, uh, called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the tribune and said, Paul the prisoner called me and asked me to bring this young man to you, as he has something to say to you. The tribune took him by the hand and going aside, asked him privately, what is it that you have to tell me? And he said, the Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow as though they were going to inquire something more closely about him. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than 40 of their men are lying in ambush for him. 
who have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, charging him, tell no one that you have, have informed me of these things. Now I'll stop there and we'll read the rest of the chapter if we get, if we get that far uh, down there. <coughs> so number 20, you said the Jews, you say the Jews. <coughs> So, what, what were the words in your, in what you just read in verse 20? Yeah, and you said the Jews have agreed. Because <coughs> man says some Jews. Yes. Well, we, we're getting yeah. there, yeah. You know, some Jews. So you say the Jews. But this is the thing that I mentioned last time and before yeah. we get the idea that when the Bible says the Jews, yeah. we think that all the Jews were bad. Yeah, Same yeah. with the Pharisees, that all the Pharisees were bad. Well, that's, and we've seen that's not actually the case. Yeah. And the same thing is happening here. Well, there's a little twist in the story that we don't we don't see unless we unless we study what these scriptures say, which helps to understand why this is happening. Now it says, when it was day, the Jews made a plot and bound themselves by an oath, neither to eat nor drink, till they had killed Paul. Now these are very violent, very active, very physical Jews. Mm -hmm. Now remember last week we looked at the four sects, S E C T X of Judaism. Mm -hmm. We had the Pharisees, we had the Sadducees, don't say it, mm -hmm. we had the Essenes, mm -hmm. and we had the Zealots, the Zealots, right, Zealots, mm -hmm. Zealots. So who do you think these could be? Zealots. Zealots. Zealots, that's right, they seem very zealous that Paul should die. Mm -hmm. And remember the argument that was had uh, previously, um, verse 7, and when he had said this, a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly were divided, for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, nor an angel, nor spirit, nor the Pharisees, but, but the Pharisees acknowledged them all. Then a great clamour arose, and some of the scribes of the Pharisees' party stood up and contended sharply, we find nothing wrong with this man. What if a spirit or an angel spoke to him? So we've got the two sides there, the Pharisees, who now suddenly are, vote, uh, are on Paul's side mm. because Paul is speaking of the resurrection, mm. which is something the Sadducees don't believe in. Mm. So the Sadducees now are really hating on Paul because he's preaching of, of the resurrection. Neither of them believe in Jesus is the cause, but that's the key to understanding the next section. These zealots, they went to the... They went to, Uh, there were more than 40 who made this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, now those chief priests and elders, at this time, at Paul's time right here, the Sanhedrin was held by the Sadducees. Mm. They, were, they were the controlling uh, mm. power at that time. During the time of Christ, it was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It was a bit like gov government today. Mm. You know, conservatives, labour. Conservatives, labour. Mm. Sometimes some other, other idiots. But it changes <laughs> backwards and forwards. And so the policies change. And here the religious outlook, uh, the main religious outlook of the Jews would change depending on whether it was the Pharisees or the Sadducees in charge. Mm. So this is why the council, the chief priests, because the chief priests at that time would have been a Sadducee. That's how they would have got the power mm. and, and being the Sadducees being more favourable in the Sanhedrin. Uh, they said to him, we, to the chief priests and the elders, the Sadducees, we have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food till we have killed Paul. That sounds very, very violent. Mm -hmm. You know, are they going to starve themselves to death unless they kill Paul? Because mm -hmm. that's a very serious oath to take. Now, therefore... You, along with the council, give notice to the tribune to bring him down to you as though you were going to determine this case more exactly. We are ready to kill him before he comes near. Now, the zealots are telling the Sadducees what to do. Mm. But you see, that's because the Sadducees are in agreement with this. The Sadducees want to get rid of Paul because Paul, Paul is preaching the resurrection. Mm. Now here's the opportunity. The zealots come along and they want the same thing. They want to get rid of Paul because Paul is speaking against mm. Judaism. That's what the zealots were dead against. Anything against Orthodox Judaism, mm. they were against, and, mm. and in a violent way. Mm. You know, 
we we read the the the, the Sicarios. That's what that's what the, the who the Tribune thought Paul was when they they first had that big um, uh, riot. He thought he was one of those Egyptians that had gone around assassinating people. This is the sort of thing that they did, you know, in the background. Think of the uh, comparable, perhaps, the French resistance of the Germans. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't an outright battle, but it was done secretly. Perhaps a Roman soldier here and there would disappear, mm -hmm. or a wagon load of supply. Something would happen, and this caused this would cause cause uh, Claudius Lucius, the, the Tribune, uh, a, a bit a bit of a problem. So they went to the chief priests and elders. We may have made an oath to taste no food till we have killed Paul. And verse 15 says, Now therefore you, along with the council, give notice to the tribune to bring him down. So they want to uh, bring him down again to judge him a, a second time, which they've already done once, mm. which caused the riot. And that's why the tribune's taken him back to the prison. Now they're going to ask him again. Uh, as, though you, as though you were going to determine this case more exactly, which is not what they were going to do. And we are ready, look what they say here, we are ready to kill him before he comes near. Now think of how uh, old, 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 old Lysias had to take Paul out of the crowds. How did he have to do that? By force. By force, that's right. Roman soldiers, shields, mm. and they had to carry him. Mm. Okay, so he knows that there's, this is going to, he needs to do it a second time, that's taking him back upstairs. So he knows this is a contentious point. So if the council call for Paul to come down for another inquiry, how do you think L L Lucius is going to react to this? Mm. And if, he's going, if he does bring him down, he's not going to just bring him down on his own, is he? There's going to be soldiers there, there's going to be... Yeah. And these are Roman soldiers. <coughs> you yeah. tell a Roman soldier to take somebody by force, yeah. and it is literally by force. Yeah. Uh, and they wouldn't hesitate. You attack a Roman soldier, it chop your arm off you know it's, these were times that were not you didn't have to wait um, to be shot at before you could shoot back so they're waiting they so said there's four children because they know there's going to be this 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 almost uh, almost a battle if they try to kill paul because they're going to have to get past the roman soldiers to get to paul so a number of them are going to die that's why 40 of them have volunteered to kill one man in one instance one short space from uh, from the barracks to the temple. So this this is a powder keg moment. You know, if this was if this really happened, Jerusalem would go into riot. The Romans would move move in and remove all power. So it's hard to understand why uh, the Sanhedrin would agree to this sort of thing because that would tip, really tip the scale. But this is how much they hated Paul and the preaching of the resurrection. Like, like you said, the devil put a target on his back, a big target, and, you know, a neon target, and it would, re it would really be aimed at. Uh, Verse 16. Verse 16, all the side of the page. Now, these details we're not sure about. But now the son of Paul's sister heard of their ambush. So he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. Now that's all we know about this young this young gentleman. Where was it? Where did he pop up from? <laughs> well that's the thing. The only the only suggestions we the only ideas we can think of that, that was that we know that Paul was from Paul was from Tarsus in Cilicia, that's right. Mm. And he was sent to Jerusalem to study under the feet of Gamaliel. Gamaliel. Very good. Mm. So he was sent to learn to be a Pharisee. So perhaps this, this is the same sort of thing. Mm. Perhaps he has also been sent to learn to be a Pharisee. Or perhaps their family moved to Jerusalem. Do we hear anything else about Paul's family? What about the sister? Did no. Paul? This is all we hear. Yeah. This is all, all we hear about him. Um, uh, I don't, no, I don't think we actually hear about his, his parents either, but, except that he was well-to-do and he was from Tarsus. Mm -hmm. uh, he must have been well-to-do to be sent to, to learn at the feet of Gamaliel, because that wouldn't, that wouldn't cheat, you know. Mm -hmm. he, there was no free education in those days. <laughs> so his son, not his son, his nephew is there as well, for whatever reason, but 
Now the son of Paul's sister heard of their ambush. How he heard of their ambush, we don't know. But the idea that he was there to learn to be a Pharisee, or, or learn Judaism, could account for how he was in the right place to hear, mm. or perhaps by somebody else, or one of his friends had heard, and so on, had passed the word along mm. about this ambush. That's the, that's the best um, idea that I can, come, I can come up with. Um, so he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. Now it's strange that he, he entered the barracks, but if you think about it, a young, a young, a young boy, a, a young man, uh, soldiers, they, they would be far from home, they would have families of their own, perhaps children of their own. You know, so you, a, a young chap coming along, a, a bit of, you know, messing around with them, a bit of play fighting, ruffling the hair, perhaps he ran errands for them. Mm. Who knows? Who knows? But he entered the barracks, there was, there was no constraint on, the, on him there. Um, uh, he entered, so he entered the barracks and he went straight to see Paul. Uh, and Paul called one of the centurions and said, take this young man to the tribune for he has something to tell him. Now he must have uttered something to this centurion to get him to do this because the centurion, he's a guy in charge of over a hundred soldiers. Yes. Now that was a position of authority. But that's what the, that's what, that's what the, the centurion does. So he, took, so he took him and brought him to the tribune and said, Paul the prisoner called me and asked me to bring this young man to you as he has something to say to you. Also, Paul was a Roman citizen. Mm -hmm. So, he would, you know, and they just tied him up and they got, oh, yeah. he got into trouble over that. So the, perhaps they were tender footing around him a little mm -hmm. bit. But, um, so that the centurion took him, took him to the tribune. And we know he had to be a, a youngish, a young gentleman, a, a, perhaps not a child, but a young, a young man. Um, because it was completely all right this, for, for the tribune. The tr tribune took him by the hand and going aside, asked him privately. So he, you can imagine taking a young a youngster by the hand to come over here and we'll have a chat. Mm -hmm. no, nothing wrong with that. So that's how we get, uh, uh, or how we can work out that he was a, a, a young a young chap. Mm -hmm. um, where am I? Nineteen. Uh, Going inside, asked him privately, what is it that you have to tell me? And he said, the Jews have agreed to ask you, okay, the Jews, and so perhaps this is second-hand information, who knows? The Jews have asked, agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow as though they were going to inquire something more closely about him. And he said to him, but do you not be persuaded by them for more than 40? So we have more than 40 now, uh, of their men are lying in ambush for him. So this is at night, mm. they're gonna call him in the morning. Already these zealots are in place, waiting. Uh, they have bound themselves by an oath not to eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man charging him, tell no one that you have informed me of these things. Now, why did the tribune want to keep this secret? So it's a surprise. It's a surprise, that's right. So they, they won't know, but he also doesn't want, if, like I said, this is a powder keg. Now he's in charge. And if Jerusalem suddenly erupts in, in a, a riot that this could develop from, who's going to get the blame for this? He is. He is, that's right. So this is why he wants to keep it a secret. Uh, so he decides to send him decides to send him away. Verse 23. Uh, then he called two of the centurions and said, get ready 200 soldiers with 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen to go as far as Caesarea at the third hour of the night. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride and bring him safely to Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter to this effect. We'll get to the letter in a second. Then he called, the t called two of the centurions we know those are guys over 100 men, so more than 100 men sometimes, depending on the, on the strength of the garrison. Get ready 200 soldiers, foot soldiers, 200 mm. soldiers, right? With 70 horsemen. So that's 70, uh, what, they would, what they would call, um, I can't remember the, the Roman name for it. Jane might know it. 
Uh, auxil they're, they're, they're auxiliaries, but there's, there's another word for it. Mm. But 70 horsemen, okay, these, these were like what we would call cavalry today. Mm. And 200 spearmen, now there's some dissension in, about that, to the 200 spearmen part, because Romans didn't have spearmen, they had, they had pylums, pylums, which were their spears, but they didn't actually have spearmen as as we imagine as Englishmen. So there's uh, some debate exact to exactly what that is, but another two, uh, um, uh, 70 horsemen, another 200 spearmen. Uh, so that's 400, 400 soldiers mm -hmm. and 70 horsemen. Mm -hmm. So that's four centuries of soldiers. So there's four centurions and there would, would have been a centurion in charge Centurion in, in charge of the horsemen as well, mm. at, at the most. Uh, and then he said, also provide mounts for Paul to ride and bring him safely to Felix, the governor. Mounts, he need one to ride, perhaps he needs one for his supplies, mm. uh, provisions, perhaps he need a, a change of horses, travelling distances like that, they would need a change of horses. I've got my, do I need to make you two sit apart? <laughs> it's there, can't they? Yeah, right. Can't they, <laughs> <laughs> also provide mounts for Paul to ride and bring him safely to Felix the governor. Felix the governor. Now we have, uh, we've got his name on it here, Antonius Felix. He was a procurator. Okay, our procurators were, 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 were like, like uh, just above the tribune. Mm. So the tribune would be in charge of a city or a, or a small area or a, or a mm. village area. Then you would have a procurator who would be in charge of what, what we would call a county, yeah. uh, uh, a province. So we have Antonius Felix, who was a, uh, a procurator, AD 53 to 60. Uh, and later on we'll see Porcius Festus, old Festus, uh, AD 58 to 62. Okay, again, different areas, so the dates, the, the dates are, are, are different. Pontius Pilate, we know, was the one that dealt with Christ, AD 26, 36. Mm. And the reason I mention these three is because these are the only three mentioned in Scripture. These were all the ones who had, the Christians had something to do, who were mentioned mm. as part of, uh, as part of the, the, the narrative. So they, these are names to remember, because he's going to come and, he's going to go and see uh, Festi Festus in a bit. But the interesting thing is, and I find it quite, quite not funny, but entertaining, is this letter that, that uh, Claudius Lysias wrote. Um, and he wrote a letter to this effect. Now, I don't know how Luke got these words apart from the Holy Spirit gave them to him, uh, or perhaps Paul got to read the letter, or, or he heard the letter being read. I don't know. But this is what it, this is what it, what it contained. Um, uh, regular Roman greeting uh, opposite to the Jews the Jews would announce themselves at the end the Romans at the start he wrote a letter to this, to this effect Claudius Lysias to his excellency the governor Felix grovel grovel greetings this man and I want you to, I want you to see the, 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 the half truths throughout this this man was seized by the Jews, true, and was about to be killed by them, true, when I came upon them with the soldiers and rescued him. Also sort of true. Mm -hmm. Having learned that he was a Roman citizen. Not true. <laughs> Almost true. He did learn that he was a Roman citizen, but not when he went to rescue him. That's right, he's completely glossed over mm. any mention of him actually tying him up and yeah. commanding him to be flogged mm. oh. who's going to argue with him <laughs> exactly uh, having learned that he was a roman citizen picking himself up and desiring to know the charge for which they were accusing him he already thought he was one of the assassins i brought him down to the council that it was paul that actually asked to speak to the council oh. i found that he was being accused about questions of their law but charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. Now that's a in, very interesting point. Mm. Okay, at each time it was, in each one of these, being accused by 
uh, what was it, uh, a question about their law. Mm. But I find no fault in him. What did Pontius Pilate say about Jesus? This is what that's Felix what was, is saying. That's what I was thinking about when Paul was put, passed from forward to post. Yeah. It's like when in Pontius Pilate says, I don't want anything to do with this. Man. I find no fault with him. Mm. Yeah. Felix says, uh, sorry, um, Claudius Lysias said, I find no fault with him. We'll find out what Felix is going to say, which is exactly the same, and Festus towards the end. Hmm. All of these said, the Romans, the Gentiles, we find no fault with him. But the Jews, they were so mad at him that they were willing to, 40 men were willing to sacrifice their lives to kill him hmm. and cause that powder keg to erupt in Jerusalem. Uh, um, 29. 29. I found, thank you, darling. I found that he was being accused about questions of their law, but charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. And when it was disclosed to me that there would be a plot against the man, again, okay, I discovered there was a plot against him, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you what they have against him. So that was the letter that he wrote. Now, when somebody caused a problem or they had to go before the courts. They could, uh, in, in Jerusalem, and according to, well, in Israel at that time, and anywhere else, according to Roman law, you could be tried in the district that you were accused of. Mm. So if you, like, murdered somebody uh, in Perea, you could be tried in Perea, even if you came from Galilee. Or you could be tried and sent to Galilee to mm. be tried. A little bit like it, it is today. If one of us goes to France and commits a crime, we could be tried in France if we have a group, they have agreement for the British government, mm. or we could be extradited mm. and sent back to be tried in our own country. Mm. <coughs> this is the same sort of thing going on. So this, Lysias wants to get him off his hands, yeah. get, him out of his, get him out of Jerusalem and stop what could potentially be a disaster to his career. Because mm. that's why this letter, it's such a crawly letter, such a, makes your skin itch. You know, he's, he's He's really been creepy. Uh, so the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him by night to An Antipatris. Antipatris was about 40 miles northwest, no, sure northwest of Jerusalem on the way to Caesarea. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason he sent so many soldiers, uh, as everybody think, says, was because this was all the heat very hilly country, mm. ideal for ambushes and, and, and assaults. So that's why he sent so many soldiers, because as we carry on, carry on, carry on reading, uh, what verse am I on, dear? 31. Mm. So I didn't call you. 32. Yeah. Didn't, call you, didn't call you dear Brian there, sorry. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris, and on the next day they returned to the barracks. So the soldiers returned to the barracks. Uh, whether that's the barracks at, at Antipatris or whether they marched back to Jerusalem, we don't know. We just know that they returned to the barracks. Because the barracks were mentioned in Jerusalem, we presume that that's where they went. Mm. 400 soldiers. That's not me. That is you. Bye. That's not me because I've turned it off. Mm. It's Marjorie. It's Marjorie. Oh, Marjorie. Do you want me to tell me? Back of the class. Back of the class. We've got a parcel that's arrived. Okay. And she's not ordered. No, I've not ordered. No, it's the world doesn't need to know. Don't give me your address, don't give me your address. Anyway, on the next, this is good. This isn't great that we can laugh, just laugh like this. And on the next day, they returned to the barracks, letting the horsemen go on them. So the horsemen carried on to Caesarea uh, with Paul in tow. I can't look over there because Viv's giggling the head off. <laughs> carried on to Caesarea with Paul and the letter, okay? Uh, and when they had come to Caesarea and delivered the letter, notice they delivered the letter first. So, so uh, not Felix, uh, yeah, it is Felix. Felix read the letter first. Uh, delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. So on reading the letter, Felix asked, he asked what province Paul was from. Again, this is the legal system. 
And when he had learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. So he was in Caesarea, which wasn't in Cilicia, but that was part of his reign, mm. part of the area that he was uh, in charge of, so he could try him uh, where he was. But he wanted to wait, and he, want, he was following the legal proceedings here, and he commanded him to be guarded in Herod, Herod's Praetorium. Now, Praetorium isn't a prison, that's the, the, uh, a bit like how 10 Downing Street, that's where the governor lived. Uh, whether it was the general in a tent or whether it was the uh, uh, whether it was the tribune, whether it was a procurator, uh, whether it was the curate who was, who was above him or, or whoever, that was the main that's where he lived. That was where the government uh, was, was all the business uh, was carried out. Well, Felix, as we'll carry on in chapter twenty-four, we'll see him. Felix was not a nice chap. He was violent. He was uh, lascivious. He was childish. Um, he used to be a slave. He got his he got his freedom, and by just by backstabbing and and, and untoward uh, things, he got to the position where he is. Uh, and Jos Josephus, uh, the historian, said that he'd never he he ruled with the mentality of a slave. Mm. So he was, he was very petty. Mm. Um, are there any questions? <laughs> 